Hey, this is YBR with Beeman G Drive, and today we're going to be taking a look at a map called Mount Glorious. So we have three locations we can choose from. We're going to start at the Summit, which is the same as the default one. And I want something a little bit more sporty than a pickup truck, so how about we go with a Broco Legrand, which is not a vehicle I usually think of when I think sporty, but the custom should actually be a great vehicle for this environment because it handles a lot better than you would expect. And we're going to be mostly driving downhill, so the lack of power isn't as apparent as if we were driving uphill. I mean, as you see, we're already up to 60, 70 miles per hour, and we're reaching 80. Just like that, thanks to the power of gravity, but we need to slow down a little bit right here because I don't want to be flying off of the road. Oh, goodness. Oh, my goodness. I was almost certain I was going to fly into the trees right there. I just barely held on. See, I was underestimating its handling capabilities. Let's not do that again this time. I believe in it to make this corner, and it does at about 40 miles per hour. That's actually a pretty good speed, considering how tight that corner was. Now, I know a little bit after we hit the corner that has a wall on it, there will be a jump, and it should be coming up any moment now. There it is. So we're going to go ahead and try to hit this thing. We're not going to fly through the tree successfully, probably. And nope. And we even got skewered by a tree. So there is absolutely no hope of being able to drive out of this. So let's bring the car back up to in front of the ramp. And we're going to try to drive it again. This time we're going to drive through it successfully, though. And to do that, you just need a little bit of luck and really good alignment. So let's see. We got the alignment. We got the luck. And can we land upright? Yes, we got all the luck there is to have. And look at this. We can keep on driving. Although this car is not really in driving condition. I'm trying to go right. It's not going right. And it's going right. And it's also tipping. See, when I said go right, I didn't mean do a roll to the right. I meant just steer right. Oh, is it going to roll off the mountain? Ah, uh, no. Do we have any traction here we could get out of there, though? No, we're stuck. So we can go ahead and reset it. And we'll keep driving the Legrand because I am having fun driving it. Although I got to get out of the dirt. We're kind of stuck in the ditch. There we go. All right, we got some corners here. Let's whip it around with the e brake some. Oh, that was pretty good. Oh, that one's too fast. That's too fast to tap that back wall. All right, we're good. We're good. And continue driving. Oh, that was actually really nice. Like, yeah, I damaged the car a little bit, but as long as it didn't affect the way it drives, I am happy. And it feels like it is still driving in a straight line. That's all that matters. In fact, the more damaged the car is, the better, as long as it still drives in a straight line. I only get sad when it stops driving in a straight line because it makes it so much harder to control it. All right, tech corner right here. We're going to slow this thing down a lot because I don't trust it much through here. But we'll try to do a little bit of a slide. Oh, don't touch that wall. Yes, that was so close to the wall. Somehow I cleared it just barely. All right. Let's not make that mistake again. This time we're going to go a little bit slower. And oh my goodness. That was actually again right on the edge. I think I see the extra space and I'm like, okay, let's use that space. Bad strategy. All right. Again, sliding it, sliding it, sliding it. Don't touch. See, it looks like I'm doing some amazing drifting, but I'm really not. Like, it's just a front-wheel drive car that pulls itself along with a lot of grace. Oh, little tap right there. That one tightened up on me a little bit more than I thought it would. Don't think it affected the way it drives, but you know what? I do think this would be a lot of fun with a different vehicle. So let's see if we can get a little bit of a flip going. Nope. I was hoping we could kind of go up on that wall and flip it over. That did not happen. Instead, we just broke the front axle like that. And the front axle brakes on a front-wheel drive car. It's basically over. So how about we try a V8 Sport Moonhawk with an automatic transmission? Like, this is not the kind of car you would really want on these really nice curvy roads. But it should be a little bit of different experience trying to drive this thing. Oh, my goodness. I'm already getting stuck trying to just do a simple... 180 degree rotation of the vehicle in a tight area and already we got some damage on the rear bumper great and let's see can we go around these corners yeah, actually the lazy boat like handling does work oh my goodness i say it does work as i almost crashed twice right there thought i was gonna oversteer it too hard and then i thought i was gonna oversteer it too hard to the other direction somehow i'm still driving though so to the car's credit it did do it it did get through the corner. Whoa. Yeah, okay, I felt a lot more confident in driving the Legrand. That is for sure. This one, I don't have confidence at any point so far. See, so here's a little lookout because I say, okay, I need to get like a coffee or something. This car is making me go crazy. We stop and maybe we can even fix up the bumper because, yeah, I don't want this damaged bumper. Like a real dude comes out the car, hits it with a hammer a few times. Like, all right, bumper is fixed. Now we can keep on driving. Actually, I probably could have actually tried to fix it using the node grabber. Oh, well. Too late now. We're going to keep on driving anyways. And that was actually a really nice, clean corner right there. But this one, not so much. I like sliding around the corners on these kind of maps. Like, yeah, it's not fast, but it makes it a lot more entertaining. 
because there's a 50% chance of me crashing, it feels like, at every corner, even though it hasn't actually been the case. That's what it feels like. It feels like every time there's a corner, I might crash. Just gotta believe in myself a little bit here. Alright, it says 30 miles per hour is the speed right here, so how fast would you actually be going through this corner? That's reasonable, I guess. I know I'm kind of hard to stay in the lane, but that's because I'm using an analog stick instead of a steering wheel like you would use in real life. I right, what's this one say? It says... Again, 30. I'm assuming that's miles per hour. I can't really read the signs as we're driving by. Although now that I think about it, this map is based on a real road in Australia, which of course I've never been to. But that leads me to the fact that I'm pretty sure most of the signage, if not all of it in Australia, is in kilometers per hour, which means I went through that corner way faster than was actually necessary. Anyways, let's go ahead and swap this out for something else. We're going to go with something with some more power. So how about we do the sporty version of the Abishu Sunburst? Because we need something faster in a straight line because we're going to be going uphill now. Because this map is just a point to point kind of map. So you get to one and then you do a quick spin around and then you go the other direction. And oh my goodness, almost already hit something. Like I did not expect to almost crash that fast with a car that handles this well. You know, with the Bodie old muscle car. Yeah, sure. With this thing, I didn't expect it. I guess when I'm going uphill, it just throws me off. Like I think, oh yeah, I can keep flooring it and I'll be okay, but it's not that steep where I need to keep flooring it all the time. I still need to brake every now and then for the corners, like any other sort of road. And I probably don't need to e-brake it like I'm doing, but hey, it's more entertaining. You yeah, see right there, like I wasn't sure what was gonna happen. I think somehow we got through that without a scratch. I'm not exactly sure how, because I had three wheels on the ground for a second. And the wall was kind of like riding on my bumper. I don't know exactly how to describe that. It was strange looking. And I don't actually know the map too well in reverse, so we're taking it a little bit slower. You saw downhill, I was taking it pretty aggressively, especially at the start, but I'm going to take it a little slower this time. Make sure I don't accidentally crash when I don't want to. Hey, look at that. It's like a little hole right there. Is that somewhere you could actually drive to or not really? Like, as far as I can tell, there's no real dirt roads or anything on this place but you know if i see something i'll go check it out yeah this is not somewhere where you could probably drive but we're checking it out anyways because i want to drive at least a little bit on the area surrounding the roads so you guys get an idea of what those are like so you see the geometry here is a little bit rough actually pretty rough right there but somehow we actually climbed it with the sunburst i have no idea how it actually managed that and some areas are a little bit more sparse of trees like where we're at right now but if we keep driving a little bit more there are tons of trees like, you know, we're even kind of doubling back to where we were because of gravity. And there's tons of trees here, and there's no way I can avoid it. All right, so that's the areas that are next to the road. To me, not much interesting to do. Most of the interesting stuff is on the road, which is a really nice road to drive on. So we're going to teleport the car back, and then we'll go ahead and freshen it up. And we'll drive for a little bit more before we change it for another vehicle. I'm thinking maybe only, like, a minute. So we're going to drive just a bit, and then when I see something interesting to crash into, we will! Or... I will drive amazingly like that and not crash at all when I thought I was going to crash on both the left and right wall within like one second of each other. And oh yeah, that's science. So it says 30 kilometers per hour. And I don't actually have a kilometers per hour display here, but you can kind of estimate it. So you would say 30 kilometers per hour would be less than 30 miles per hour. So how about, how does this feel? Like going about 22 miles per hour. Oh, that feels too easy. That feels way too easy. These speed limits are too low. Okay, this one says 20 kilometers per hour so maybe we'll slow this one down a lot so how about 20 miles per hour just to see if we can oh yeah that's fine that's fine actually that's a cool sign right there i don't think i've ever seen that sign before it must be custom made for the map it says very steep climb for the next two kilometers 15 percent grade you know what that means it's time to get something that's good for climbing and things so has it been a minute probably about a minute since i said that i would think so and by good for climbing things i mean also bad for climbing things we can get the weakest T-Series there is, and we're going to put a big old trailer on it and see if we can climb up this thing. So weak little T-Series, and then we're going to go big van of sody pops. Hopefully it'll fit next to me. I don't know. That's kind of... Whoa! That's not at all where I expected it to go. It went, oh, underground. Okay. Hopefully if we go straight up, it'll just be right below my vehicle, and I won't have to do much. Yeah, there's no vehicles around here. Okay. Uh, new plan. We're going to go to my vehicle, then we're just going to teleport it right next to it right here. Then we gotta flip the sodi pop upright, and that looks like it'll fit, but it's kind of inside the ground a little bit, so we need to put it a little bit higher, so I'll just move it a little bit behind me right there. That looks pretty good, so we go to my truck, and then we gotta connect the truck to the trailer, and actually this truck feels like it's struggling just to climb it without a trailer. Maybe I shouldn't have grabbed the weakest truck possible. Too late now, though. This is what I'm trying to do. All right, attach trailer. Trailer is attached, and we're gonna floor it. Oh, no! Oh, no! <laughs> 
Wait, it has it. It has the power, the torque. The torque is real. It's going very slowly though. And if it gets a little bit steeper, it will struggle. We gotta keep our momentum at all costs and I'm gonna even go to manual transmission mode to make sure we can keep the RPMs up because if this thing shifts in the middle of a corner at the wrong time, it could be death to the vehicle. As in we're just gonna roll backwards basically. So I'm taking this as wide as possible where I almost hit the wall. And I'm still flooring it, mind you. This is flooring it with the T-Series with the trailer and this is as fast as it goes, like 10 miles an hour. Yeah, oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Downshift, downshift, go, go, go. Gotta use this first gear better. See the regular transmission, it short shifts me, man. Gotta stick it in the first gear and keep going. 2,000 RPM, get it all the way up to 3,000, I don't care. I'm pretty sure it can get up to red line before I have to actually shift and I don't need to shift right now. I think it's just holding that RPM because of the hill. Point is though, heaviest trailer with weakest truck. It can make it, even though it's a struggle. A serious struggle for this thing. Kinda wanna make it a little bit faster, but I wanna also see if it makes it. I'm, I'm torn right here, what do I wanna do? Uh, since this isn't that fun to watch, we'll just make it a little bit faster, cause I'm sure you guys over there are just bored of seeing me hold the accelerator and go in a straight line for 20 seconds straight. So we'll try parking it right here, disconnect the trailer, all right, drive the truck forward a little bit and we're just gonna give it the big turbo. So we're gonna go to frame and then engine. We wanna put the T600 turbocharger on this thing. And that should be more than enough to pull this thing up the hill easily. So we'll just let it roll down the hill a little bit. I forgot I was in manual mode for a second. I'm like, wait, why wanna go? Oh yeah, that's the brakes you're hitting there. All right, that looks lined up. First gear and floor it. Oh, I wasn't lined up. I wasn't lined up. I've never seen that happen before. Usually if the dots appear, it's going to connect. Are we lined up? Interesting. It's something uh, wrong with the trailer. We'll just reset it real quickly, see if that helps at all. All right, trailer's been reset. And then we try again to attach it. We'll park and brake off, and then we roll backwards. I'm going to wait for it to actually attach this time. Okay, that is surely attached. So go! There we go. Okay, and oh my goodness, it's moving now. 10 miles per hour, no problem. Up to 14, 15. Okay, I'm talking a little prematurely there. There's 15. Now I should mention right now, unfortunately this map does not support AI in its current version at this current date. In the future it might, who knows, but as of right now, the only driving that'll be done is by you and I am driving poorly as I cut this corner way too close and I'm almost tipping the trailer and getting it stuck in the dirt. That was great. But yeah, with the T600 turbo, we are moving up this hill at 20 miles per hour. It feels like we're doing great, even though 20 miles per hour isn't that fast. Honestly, I don't know if the T300 could have made it. This is probably the steepest part yet. And we're gonna start slowing down a bit, so it's time for the downshift. Keep it in the power band. All 75 PSI of boost doing work right here. And there we go, we're accelerating a little bit again. We're up to 16 miles per hour. I might just hold it in third gear because third gear seems to work real nicely here. But yeah, T600, heavy trailer, easy peasy, if not a little bit slow. Now going downhill, that would be a different story because good luck throwing this thing down on some of these hills and you're gonna cook those brakes. At least that's what I would be afraid of is cooking the brakes. You gotta do a lot of engine braking to make sure they're okay and stuff. And I am getting a little bit bored of having this trailer, so goodbye trailer. We're on full speed mode now. We don't need no trailer. I am a proud independent truck who don't need no trailer at all. Now let's see how this thing drives. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Why is the like wheel locked up? That was weird. Like I stopped steering, but the wheels are still skidding. Let's see if it does it again. Yeah, it looks like the wheel is locked up, but I think it's just, it's actually putting down so much power. I don't have traction. Well, too much torque. I don't have traction, that's why. I don't think I've ever driven the T-Series with this setup before. This is actually surprisingly fun. Like all this torque pulls it up the hill enough to make it interesting to drive because we're going 50 miles per hour. Doing any corner on this thing at 50 miles per hour keeps them interesting. And we're doing 50 uphill. T-Series, I will never doubt you just like I will never doubt a Legrand. I will doubt your cornering capabilities though. That was scary. Gotta do a couple of downshifts. I wonder if I double shift it, if that might be a little bit easier on me, because I am shifting through the gears a little too fast for my own good. Yeah, double shifting seems pretty decent. 
We got so much power, we don't need to worry about keeping it in the power band, because the power band is big. With the T600 with no trailer. And keep on it up. And we should be getting very close to where we started, it feels like. Because it shouldn't be that far away. There it is, okay. If you want to, you could actually go over the wall and then fly off the map completely like I'm doing right here. Anyways, that will do it for this video. Till next time, this has been YBR. I'll see ya. And also see if this truck ever crashes into anything. There we go. Ah, that's how you remove a truck from the frame. Anyways, I'll see ya.